Welcome to What's On Your Napkin. Jared Yellen here, founder of Project 10K, and I'm absolutely honored to have my man, the dynamic Deacon, Deacon Harold here. What's up, brother? How are you doing, it's Jared? It's going to be such a blast Hello. having you. So It's so funny. I knew you were coming for a few weeks, and I was telling Tiffany, I can't wait for Deacon to come. Like, I just can't wait. Your energy is so lit up. I love your, your intentionality in life. I love what you're doing in the world. I love what, what, what we're doing together in the space of tech, which we'll talk about in our NASDAQ interview. So make sure you watch that episode. What we're doing in tech is off the charts. You need to see this. But give a little background. Who is the Dynamic Deacon? <laughs> well, the first thing is I'm an immigrant to this country. I was born in Barbados. We're first generation to come to the United yeah. States. Um, grew up in New Jersey, just yes. as you did, yes. right? New Jersey <laughs> in the love house. It. And, um, you know, I, I've always been a very religious person. You know, it's always been an important part of who I am. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I thought I might have had vocation there and, and uh, I was discerning that for a while. Then met the woman, ended up being my wife, and then she's from Oregon, so as we moved out very there. Cool. And I was in law enforcement for about 23 years and then left that to do kind of a faith-based initiative. So awesome. I speak and write all around the world. I sp I've spoken in front of tens of thousands of people. I've been to 23 countries wow. around the world. I've written five books. Three of them bestsellers. So, awesome, uh, uh, and, and so, uh, and so now we have this initiative together, which we'll talk yeah, about. Yeah, later. let's talk about now. It's a so Christian marketing about. solution, a marketing yeah. platform. What what lights you up about this technology? Well, for, for, the, for faith, for Christianity. What about this? Yeah, what's here? what's so great is that you have Christians right now who are using you know different services for email. Like if you want to send out email, you know you have a five thousand tier, then ten thousand. You have to pay more for that. And if you want to do social media posting, you got to pay for that. And if you want to do opt-in landing page, you got to pay for that. We're putting it all under one so roof. Powerful. So <laughs> powerful. So powerful. It's gonna, it's gonna be awesome. And we're offering also what we call campaigns, which are our classes, online classes. We can do a webinar. You can, and I've used them myself. It's amazing. During COVID, when I couldn't go out and speak in person, yeah. I had to deliver content online. I didn't know how to use Zoom. I had to figure all that out. <laughs> But I use the platform of Christian Marketing Solution to help me stay relevant even in the midst of COVID. It's critical. You know, it was and this message yeah. matters. Like this, Absolutely. Like, that's what, like how important is this message right now? Like oh, this it, message it, it's it has extremely to important. Proliferate. And here's the key, because right now we have people's voices are being silenced, being canceled, they are being deplatformed. That will not happen with us. I love it. That's love that's it. another a big advantage of what we're doing here. We're creating a platform where people will not be deep platform because they're trying to bring their own message. Listen, this is the heat coming to NASDAQ, baby. This is the heat. So <laughs> right now we have entrepreneurs coming to us, as you know, with these napkin ideas, these concepts, these dreams, and they're gonna pitch us. They're gonna pitch us their idea that they scribbled on a piece of paper some years ago and others more recently. And their hope from us is we're gonna say, yes, let's move forward. Because do you realize that you can, every company that exists today that we can't live without at one point in time started on a piece of paper? You can't bypass that step, right? Like you can't bypass the step of I have an idea and then you just commit to it. From Virgin to Tesla, every one of these companies, like, like Elon Musk literally drew a picture of Tesla before it was Tesla. Like that's just how everything begins. And we're about to see entrepreneurs from around the world pitching their ideas. And as you're watching us right now, we got an ask for you. The ask is enjoy the show, but also engage in the show. When you see an entrepreneur with an idea that you stand for, you're like, that has to exist. Where has that been? I'd be paying for that if it was already live. Please let us know in the comments below. Influence our decision. And the same holds true if you stand against it. Politely, let us know why. So that you can influence whether or not we say yes to moving forward with this entrepreneur into a private due diligence session. So with that, who is our first entrepreneur coming to share what's on your napkin? So our first entrepreneur is in the house. What is your name and where are you calling from? My name is Seth Markwit and I'm calling from sunny South Florida, baby Florida. Awesome. Thank you for, uh, for being here. We're very excited to see what's on your napkin. So please take it away. You got five minutes. Go for it. Five minutes. All right. I'm going to go quick then. 
My name is Seth Marquitt. I am an emergency room physician and lifestyle medicine physician in South Florida. I'm going to introduce to you to my startup called Base 10. Its goal is removing all the barriers that prevent people from achieving optimal health and wellness. We're like a 3PL company or general contractor for your health. So in many religions, it's documented and quoted that whoever saves one life saves the world entire. Well, what if you could save thousands of lives or hundreds of thousands of lives? Well, this base 10 health systems moonshot is just that. We want to save the lives and protect millions of individuals' most valuable asset, their health, through the creation of a SaaS-based system that merges both virtual and in-person care. It's an evidence-based, personalized lifestyle medical program that then funnels all of this content and gives access through a single point of entry. First, I'm gonna to have to tell you quickly what uh, lifestyle medicine is. This is a form of evidence-based medicine that focuses on whole foods, regular exercise, adequate sleep, stress management, and avoiding risky uh, behaviors because these have been known to treat and reverse most lifestyle-related chronic disease. So we have a major problem, and that's the healthcare in this country is costing 3.3 trillion annually. 80 to 90% of all disease is attributed to this chronic disease. And lifestyle medicine addresses the root cause uh, of most of these diseases. Lifestyle medicine is an evidence-based medicine. The institutions in this country are creating a bigger uh, problem. The costs continue to climb, life expectancies to continue to decrease. Uh, employers and governments are becoming the main payers in health and insurance costs, and they're destroying the self-balancing marketplace. Uh, the present belief also is that pharmaceuticals, supplements, and surgery are the treatment, and they're really not. It's lifestyle medicine. So additionally, um, people know very little about what healthy is. They think they do, but there's a loss of critical thinking with social media. There's too many pseudo-experts. Um, we cover the base content that's most important in an evidence-based fashion. Um, and we do what other medical systems don't. If you look at the center of the slide here, all the insurance companies are going to do secondary prevention. They do screening tests, and then they treat when they find that something is abnormal. Uh, companies like 10X Health, which are wonderful, they, they treat up at the top of that pyramid. They may suggest things like eat healthy and exercise, but nobody really addresses that problem. And that's the bulk of the iceberg. Um, Base 10 Health addresses all of that. So consider us kind of like waste management uh, is to waste, like we, uh, base, 10 X, base 10 health is to your health, but somebody's got to do it. It might not be sexy, but it's really important. We focus on prevention through education, which is our major point in difference. Uh, and it takes a lot of time and effort. So if you look at most of the, uh, most of the medical um, management out there, and you look at this Venn diagram on the left, it's kind of like your red water. This is what's going on. There's a lot of companies out there in the blue that are doing great things, but they're not looking at it from a 2022 perspective and the tech. So Base 10 Health does exactly that. It uses this SaaS system in a subscription model to bring everything under one roof. So I'd like to think of ourselves, you know, when you, when you think a Home Depot is to your home, and Amazon is to your life, base 10 would be to your health. Uh, it's your one-stop shop for all things health. So the program, uh, if you look at this picture here on the right, the pyramid, it's the foundation. Uh, it's a single point of entry to optimal health. All things under this roof or access to all these things would be evidence-based and it would use a hybrid model that would allow you to both be seen by a provider or a specialist or consultant either through telemedicine or in person. Uh, so look at your laptop as your single point of entry. And everything that currently exists is its own entity. Nothing is, is, is made easy. You have to go to this one website or the other uh, website. So Base 10 Health, you would log in and it would be a controlled environment, a safe environment where everything is there, you kind of get on this conveyor belt and it takes you from point A, which is disease or unhealthy to healthy. Um, so we use Blackboard like streaming uh, uh, education, similar to Canvas at the universities. We use a, a science-based medical discipline like the College of Lifestyle Medicine. 
Uh, there's companies out there like Peloton and LifeFit, uh, but we would have our own platform of streaming in this exercise and fitness component. Uh, Signify Health is a company that currently sends doctors to your home. Uh, we would have our own physicians that would evaluate as part of that hybrid model. Uh, we would still partner up with LabCorp and Quest so that we would have biomarkers to monitor. Uh, things like Clubhouse, which currently exists, these group forums and chats, this would all be branded under um, base 10 under one platform. I'm not going to uh, labor you with the, the programs, but just in the interest of time, uh, who is our market? If anybody seen City Slicker back in the 90s? Great, great movie. There's this monologue that he gives about getting old. You know, when you're a teenager, you think you are, are invincible and you are. And then grow, going through the, the 20s, 30s, 40s. But it's true. Things start to break down in your mid-30s. And that's really our market. Um, I've worked in a facility where I took care of a lot of people. And we, we see, you know, the full spectrum. But generally, it's 30s and 40s. Your doc tells you you have hypertension, high cholesterol, and you go see a doc. So we're looking at a market of about 35 to plus, you know, 70. Um, we would be operating on a subscription model similar to like a Peloton or a Netflix, you know, 12.95 per month, and then you add on a la carte. Uh, we would have corporate licensing agreements if we wanted to go to the uh, corporate corporate side of things where we would have subscriptions or license fees, which would cover based on the size of your business. Um, this is a huge market. I mean, the, the healthcare industry, like I said, is an $8.45 trillion market, and it's only gone up since 2018. Uh, Peloton, just for example, to have a single subscription model just to ride a bike with other people, you're looking at 5.9 million members with 2.3 using their Peloton platform. So think of Base 10 Health as all of those things I've already described um, under one roof, and we would have ownership of all of that. So I'm definitely the right person for this job. I span, you know, my, my company is called Spectrum Health because I operate in emergency medicine on one extreme and lifestyle medicine and concierge consulting on the other. Um, certainly qualified for the job. I've been in leadership positions, medical directors, and I, I have a command of, of not only the, the um, content, but also the results. I've taken care of thousands of people in a very prestigious facility where I see what happens when you come in with a certain build, you go through certain programs and people take time with you and then you exit. So um, but between all those things, I'm definitely the right person for the job. Uh, the go-to-market strategy would be a business to business or business to consumer or business to government. And right now, 2022 social marketing, digital marketing is enormous. Using automated intelligence or artificial intelligence, virtual reality, augmented reality, creating short videos, content marketing, uh, partnering with influencers, we could make this go very big, very quickly. And it, it works, which is the greatest thing. So. When one person goes through this program, they are our major, you know, cost of acquisition is decreased because this person tells 20 of their friends, you have to do this program. It's amazing. Similar to the Fabergé uh, Organics commercial back in the 1984. It's, she tells one friend and they tell their friends. Um, this project, I think 10K, when I discovered 10K online and Grant Cardone and all the other things out there, I was like, these stars are aligned. If I could work with this company to get this product out there, it would be a, a magnificent win. Um, 10K has the ability to impact the field of medicine, similar to the way Grant Cardone has impacted real estate. And I look at the physical body as the real estate for the soul, and nobody really wants to live in the projects. I think that the 10K, um, the Project 10K would complete the pyramid, so to speak. Uh, we have aligned values, strategically located. I'm right here. I used to have a condo in Sunny Isles, Florida. Um, and from some of the stuff I've seen online, we're kindred spirits. We just haven't met yet. Uh, one interesting tidbit about myself, um, you know, I've been in the media and on the news, but my favorite was the, uh, the worm episode of Untold Stories. And one of my favorite comments on there was the only decent actor in, in the, the uh, episode was the worm. And on that, 
Apologize for rushing through here, but uh, a lot of content, obviously, and to get it through in about six minutes. Um, So I thank you, and here's my contact. Awesome. we got questions for you, Seth. Great job. So you you definitely have identified a problem. So healthcare is definitely not, uh, is is sick care. So you can stop sharing your screen right now. Um, Questions for you. Where would you begin? Because that one slide where you showed all the different features, it's, that's like a $50 million build. Like it's, it's, it's a really big build because there's so many things that you're going to want to have happening inside of this one platform. What right. would be the one thing that you would start with to validate our ability to bring this to the market? I think initially you could white label things and license other products that are out there under your name. That would be key. Um, there's a company called Stronger You that was created by a guy that really didn't know a lot. He wanted to change what he did. It's another one of these success stories. He ended up merging, I think, with LifeFit, multi-million dollar, and he knew nothing. He was doing one-on-one consulting for health and wellness. I really have been privileged to work in arenas where I know what would work. And when I came across this platform, I said, you know, everything you've told me, Silicon Valley, like, you know, if you've seen that HBO episode, Silicon Valley, classic comical, et cetera. But, you know, I'm like you. I think you're from New Jersey, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Both of us. I'm from yeah, New yeah. Jersey. What, where's that? Both of us are, Deacon as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I'm from New Jersey. You know, we grow up in New Jersey. We haven't been exposed. There, as you said, there's no way to get into that. I'm not in Silicon Valley. I'm down here in Miami. I'm from New Jersey. So, so with the I platform, was- you mentioned content. So yeah. where is that content coming from? Is that you? Is, are we going to be partnering no, no. with other experts and they're going to be putting content on oh, the platform? Oh, yes. Yeah, in answer to your question, um, there are going to be other experts that we could pay a, 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 an honorarium or a fee to deliver that content. You know, physicians, unlike most people, we give it altruistically. And if you give them a, let's say, $1,000 to deliver a real-time TED Talk-like lecture, they'll do it. And you stream that in live because live content is key. But do you have those relationships? Because it's not that I easy. Do. yes. Okay, so, yes. How, so how do you go about building a content library? Because one of the reasons why many health apps fall short is they're so predicated on having like an infinity with regards to content. Like they just, it's content forever. Cause otherwise whoever the first person signs up, eventually they go through all the content and there's no use for their the service anymore and they cancel. How do you always stay ahead of the first person with relevant educational content? Well, that's the key. It's these strategic partnerships with the experts in the field that have their own reason for being involved with this Question. company. Yeah. But more than that, if you've heard of Blue Apron or HelloFresh or these food yeah. delivery services or Peloton, all of these things, none of them are evidence-based. They haven't, they haven't placed them in the, the package. Obviously, there, there's a lot more I, I would need to discuss than the pitch. But for the purposes of this pitch, it's understanding that this is the one stop. There's no, what should I do? I did this real time in an immersion program at a facility that was like a camp where people go there and they actually live there for two weeks. So I know the content that comes through, how it's done. The problem is you can't hit the masses, but other companies have proven that you can. Peloton, I'm just using as an example, and Netflix, like subscription models that will allow you to get real time content. We are sitting on the edge of tech. I'm in an MBA program right now in a social media class. It's mind boggling where we're going and we could capture all of this and through you know white label initially, but these aren't complicated things, some of them to own. Streaming your own fitness crew on video to come in so that you have your own fitness classes from day one, you can do that. The medical content would be easy for start. I would, I would definitely, I put together hundreds of lectures in the past um, so what about the network of providers? So you mentioned like telehealth or, or providers. Right. Are we tapping into a network or are we building the network itself? No, we would be tapping into a network that we would be onboarding those people. And thank God for licensing. You know, when you look for somebody to do your electricity in your home, you get a, a licensed provider. But licenses aren't all the same. We would need to be using somebody in, in there's a board called the American College of Lifestyle Medicine which sounds foo-foo, but it's not. It sits on top of my my emergency medicine boards, but it really, that's what they showcase, evidence-based preventions. Primary prevention is educating people before they have the disease. Secondary prevention is when they actually, you prick their finger and you say, oh, you're a diabetic, your sugar's high. 
Most of healthcare focuses on secondary prevention because primary prevention is costly. It requires somebody like me to educate and talk and personalize. And primary care is supposed to do that, but they don't. That's where the healthcare system is broken. But I know how this- All right, Deacon, what questions you got? Yeah, so so Dr. Markey, let me tell you why I'm interested in something like this, because I, I, I'm a professional speaker and author. So I wrote two books during COVID, but I also wasn't able to go out and speak. And so I gained about 35 pounds and I was feeling sluggish. I was feeling a little depressed because I was not able to do, you know, what, you know, what I'm called to do. Right. And so my sister challenged me a month ago because she started doing a plant based eating thing. So I started doing right. that. And I've been feeling better. I've been losing weight. I, I mean, I feel motivated now to exercise and get back at it again. How is uh, base 10 going to help me? I understand what you're doing from the macro, but now I, I, from the micro, how is that going to help me? Now that I'm motivated to get back, how is this going to help me? Oh, base 10, listen, I, I could spin you around. Well, you, firstly, if you do anything other than what you're doing prior, you're going to get better. That's the problem is you could go on a keto diet, you can go on an Atkins diet, you can go on a Mediterranean diet, you can go on a Pritikin diet. You name it, you're going to do better than what they call the SAD diet, the standard American diet. You go to a grocery store and they have that magazine there and you're like, oh, I didn't know I should be eating eggs as long as they're free range, not regular, which I'm not saying is the case. But there's a lot of misguided information there because people tend to make a lot of money from it. We have evidence-based scientific, I'll show you articles written up in journals, of medical journals, but more importantly, viscerally, I spent 14 years in a facility. I know what's going to work. And what I do is I have to look at your barriers. I don't know where you live, where you work, what you do. You know, your problem might be X, where somebody else's problem is Y. So this is a way where we look at an individual, we break down the barriers, then provide them evidence-based tools to succeed. There's no question, and you will succeed, there's no question. But the problem is I've never been able to bring this to masses because people are operating in their silos. And I'm sitting there from this perspective saying- But it could be know, something else. So you just said a point, like you don't have all that information from Deacon. And right. one of the reasons that, that you haven't brought it to the masses is because there's an element of this that's very individualized. And I'm curious, and you only had six minutes, so you weren't able to go deep, right. into how you can take an app and create such an individualized, evidence-based process for someone to go through. Let's see what our audience thinks. What are your thoughts on Base 10 Health? Is this a platform that you would use, you would invest in, you'd commit to, you'd follow through on? Are you looking for a solution like this? What are your thoughts on Seth's pitch? What are some of the feedback you have for Seth? Well, I liked uh, the, the knowledge that he had, I thought was great. I thought he gave a, a great macro overview. I think um, that people are, are moving now, especially during COVID, they're moving more toward telehealth. So that's something that's more familiar yeah. to them, accessing doctors and, and medical care and information online or via apps. Uh, to try to bring it all together, that's what I find attractive about what he's yeah. doing. I'm just curious about the scaling. Yeah. Uh, yeah, how, yeah. How's he going to scale that? You know, you have individual users and then, you know, word of mouth. But then how do you scale that into, into a thriving business? Yeah, awesome. So I'm going to ask to move forward with you. Uh, I, your, your knowledge in and of itself is a reason why I want to go deeper. When you show up to due diligence, though, that's what we're going to have to touch on, what Deacon just said there, is how do you scale this while still like creating the impact? Because there are, I don't know, tens of thousands of health apps out there that claim the same thing that this claims. I know this is different. I get it. I totally get it. You're going to the source of every one of someone's conditions and health challenges and the reason why that they're experiencing pain and suffering. So I get it, but that's what they say as well. So how do we ensure that this is going to provide the impact that I know that you stand to produce, but at the same time scale to millions of people? Because if we don't scale to millions of people, then you have the exact same situation that you're in right now where you're serving a very small radius around South Florida and you want to do this for the world. But I'm impressed, your knowledge is off the charts. You're very, you, you have a lot of passion as well, which we look for. So let's talk about it more in due diligence, but make sure you really dig into how do you create that individualized experience with tech? Because you figure that thing out, this goes to the moon and back. Appreciate you. All right, after commercial break, we'll have another Thank entrepreneur you, coming to the show. What if you could increase profit and transparency on your farm for generations to come? What if you were able to save dozens of hours each month? What if you were able to reduce the time and stress spent on bookkeeping during harvest season? What if we had an answer to your prayers? The solution is called Field Pocket. Field Pocket is a software application to keep track of farmers' harvest data. 
From grain contracts, to managing delivery tickets and settlement sheets, to linking all the documents in organized reports. The app automates previously manual tasks on the farm to create a more efficient and reliable tracking system for farmers, allowing them to ditch their paper and pen approach and automate data analysis related to grain tracking and payments. But enough of the tech talk. Field Pocket will give you time to spend with your children. Field Pocket will eliminate the stress of running the business of the farm. Field Pocket will reap you benefits that you never thought possible. Here at Field Pocket, we aim to increase your quality of life on the farm for generations to come. Simple as that. We invite you to join a Field Pocket family so that you have more time for your family. We are back from a commercial break. One for one so far. All right. Another entrepreneur sharing what's on your napkin. Please introduce yourself. What is your name and where are you calling from? Hi, thanks, Jared. I'm Bobby Kunta. I'm calling from Northern Sierra Mountains in California. Awesome. Thanks so much for, uh, for tuning in. We're excited to have you. You've got five minutes. Please share what's on your napkin. Thanks, Jared. Uh, what we've developed here at Non-Fungible Events is a party to earn platform. It's a gamified uh, mobile app that is connected to a, a Web3 enabled user profile interface through backend database to uh, close the value loop at events, basically. Um, there's always people who feel like they're left out of events that are involved in it, whether they're sponsors or uh, per performers, participants, speakers. I've been hosting events and building communities uh, for decades, and our team collectively has oh, hundreds of years with event planning experience. And we actually we started our company thinking uh, we're going to be hosting uh, immersive events, and we didn't think we were going to be uh, non-technical tech co-founders at this point is what we're feeling as, because we've made this pivot here towards... Uh, developing something that's uh, not just serving our own needs as event planners, but actually uh, helping other people who want to plan events. So, so the, the holes in the, in the market that we observed were that uh, there's exp immersive experiential marketers and event planners that are looking for ways to create tech forward experiences for people at events. We came at this from a Web3 objective thinking about NFT and cryptocurrency events. That's our native background. That's what we were doing. Those are the events that we started to plan. So we wanted to find a way to, to incentivize people to interact with each other more and to interact with the elements of the event in a better way. Um, and to in doing so, provide something that's fun for people, novel ways to provide value and memorable activities. And the, the third bullet there actually came as an extra added, like we need safe ways to introduce and onboard people into Web3 at this point. It's a very small percentage of the world that's uh, finding their way into cryptocurrency. And when they do, there's a lot of fear that it's not safe. And we can provide a safe, fun, simple way to do that. Um, the tool itself here at its core is an events management mobile app. There's about 50 of them on the market. Uh, there's there's pretty extensive competition out there for stuff that's just uh, event planning. You know, it's a white label thing. You can market it, you can brand it, you can put your own logos in there, the event program, the platform, uh, the floor plans, right? A wayfinding element. Uh, what's different with ours is that um, it's, the event planner, The it's a subscription-based platform as a service. Let's start back there and the subscriber would be the event planner, the, the marketer uh, who wants to host this event. They can then go to their sponsors and get their cryptocurrency or their NFTs or their um, their coupons or their digital redemption codes, anything that could be delivered in a digital form and they can load it into this system. As the end user, who is the event guest, uses this mobile app, moves around the event, scans QR codes, a future iteration will be place-based. They just have to be in the right place at the right time with GPS-based technology. They earn experience points like they're in a game. Those experience points add up. As they level up, they then get paid out in whatever the crypto or the NFT digital assets that the subscriber loaded into the system. So it closes that value loop for people there. Um, the, the product itself, it, this kind of explains what I said here. This is Web3 enabled user profiles. The users are in experience points, they're paid out. We've got a white paper uh, that explains this in, in pretty extensive detail wanted to show this quick video, see if this is even worth the time here. We've got some, some mock-ups and, um, and line drawings. I mean, we're, we're barely off of our napkin at this point. I've had a lot of napkin ideas and didn't expect this one to, to come to where it is, but um, we're a little bit off napkin here. We've got a, a reasonable team put together. 
I'll get to the team in a second. We're really excited about this because it's it actually lives inside of, of more converging industries than we even came at this at. We, we came at this looking at live events, hybrid and virtual events that uh, connect IRL or in real life activity to Web3 and metaverse activities, uh, in, mostly in the crypto and NFT space. I come from play to earn gaming. That's where this party to earn gaming idea came from. Um, we just came off, I, I have not slept in like almost all weekend because uh, we just hosted a huge event down in Vegas. It was an esports tournament that uh, brought together the Axie Infinity community. We flew in our champions from everywhere. Uh, some of our advisors are from the music, sports, fashion industry. Uh, we've got event planners. We've already got some traction established on this, actually. Um, we have a pre-registration for Alpha Form on our website right now, and I've been talking to Web3 event planners across the country who have already expressed interest in using this. Um, I seem to be like one step ahead of my slides here, but that's kind of what I've said already. We've got we've got great quality partners. We've got great sponsors that we've worked with already. Um, we've got significant uh, following on social media platforms, and. Um, we know that we are filling a, a hole that that exists here. I think it's what you would call a, a, a pink ocean as well. Um, we have a go to market plan. We have revenue projections. We've got um, we're, we're saying right now that we're currently stepping into a, a pre seed phase um, with this event behind us. Now we're looking at raising um, 250K to get us to MVP, improve this traction and bring that MVP to market. Uh, we are Imagine that close on the heels of that, uh, once we hit our, our traction KPIs, that we're going to jumpstart a seed round to bring that further and expand our development and our marketing team and our sales team. Um, we have considered our pricing structure. We're going to be able to beat, it looks like, our, our competition. And again, our competition is nowhere near Web3 enabled or uh, using cryptocurrency. We've got a great team put together, uh, oh, almost 200 years of event planning experience. Uh, our chief product officer has developed a mobile app that's uh, beating Uber in Sri Lanka. Josh James is from Canada. He's incredible uh, a marketing experts. And uh, we're working with some great folks, smart contract developers. We're, we actually may use a different mobile app development team. We're looking to contract out our MVP and then use the, the pre-seed round here to um, to either start developing that development team or to uh, use the, the seed round that's next to do so. This is a look at our competitive landscape here. Uh, these are about 10 of the uh, of the mobile apps that are out to gamification, gamification, NFT integrations. And a future iteration of this, we anticipate having augmented reality gamification. So you just hold your phone up in front of you and move around the event and kind of hunt down NFTs that are hidden in the floor plans. You've already loaded your floor plans in there anyway, since this is a wayfinding tool as well. Um, this is it. So um, uh, people who are committing to the alpha trial are, are agreeing to uh, to want to use this at, at their events. Um, most of these people are events between a few hundred to, to tens of thousands of people anticipated. And what they are agreeing to is that they, they see the same value. There, there's a gap in the value loop at events and they're looking for a way to close that. If, they, if somebody can pay um, $5,000 for a single use uh, to subscribe to this platform or $60,000, $70,000 to have the access to this subscription-based platform for a year for all of their events. Say they do weekly events. Um, the, the value that that gives to their sponsors who are giving them probably 10 to 20 times that amount uh, each year it is pretty significant. Um, well, like that part I get, was, you've definitely okay. hit, you hit the need. Like you, you have a solution <laughs> here, which is awesome. Well, my, my under, like, so when they're saying, yes, they're not currently using this yet. So what are they using? One of those other competitors that are just suboptimal? Like what, what, and they're That's just waiting question. for you? Like what, what are they using in the interim? Nothing. Uh, the people are building their own apps. They're, uh, they might use EventMobi or, or Whovi. I, I, people have given up on this, uh, of trying to solve this problem. So this is not a new problem. It's one that, that Web2 technology has tried to solve um, for since there's been mobile apps and nobody was really able to do it. Some of those competition that you saw, they have um, you know, games on there and ways to incentivize people with points. None of that really ever managed to work. Yeah. Uh, what The reason we think it's going to is because there's monetary value behind it. And we see 
the value in that. So how are you funding this to date? You got a relatively large team. Um, what is this currently, you know, through a big event in Vegas? Like, so what, what is the current economic status of the sure. company? The event in Vegas was um, the, the product of sponsors who, who see the value in what we're doing as a team of event planners. Um, the, the tech itself, we have not been able to put too much money into because we used a lot of our runway to establish our branding and our presence in the space uh, with this event. Uh, at this point, you know, we, we are a, a globally recognized brand in the, the Web3 event planning space. Um, so, oh shoot, what was the question? Gosh, I need sleep here, Jack. Yeah, so, does, this so, show, does this show grit though? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. But so so what, how are you making money right now? Like, what does that look like? We are not making money. And, so how you how whole, you afford your team? team Did you raise money? Because you said pre-seed was two fifty. So is the team just working for free right now? And they have they have other basically okay. yes, sir. Got it. Okay. Uh -huh. Everybody sees the value in what we're doing is committed to this. Um, most of us are in it full time here. And why do you think only two hundred fifty thousand dollars to build the, your minimum viable product? Because I think you're we, really undershot shooting that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. And uh, we very well may be. This is something that we're exploring very actively with our new chief product officer. Uh, and those numbers, we, we, our advisor said we need to put a number on something and, and this is the best place we came to. Uh, we can contract the MVP out for about a, a hundred thousand. Uh, we put in about another hundred thousand into marketing and, and 50,000 for overhead of about uh, five to six months. And then, as I said, we anticipated a seed round or whatever name you'd want to give the next round. Uh, very close on the heels of this as soon as we hit MVP. And what's your most significant need now? Is it going to be a team? Are you looking for promotional support? Are you looking for investment? Like if we were to partner, what about Project 10K feels like the right partner for you? Well, we need we need connections. We need capital. Uh, we need to... Uh, we need, I think those are the two biggest, you know, when people ask me, I say, we need to meet the right people. We need to get put in the right, in the right room with, um, to, to grow out our team into what it needs to be. We need a chief financial officer. I need a chief technology officer. Um, and then we need to develop out multiple different development teams, you know, front end and back end of a mobile app, as well as, uh, we do have a team that's, that's willing to work with us. Nifty Labs, a great team that's uh, been with us uh, for some of the work we've done already. We've already launched, we're launching an NFT project. It actually, uh, the private minting started two days ago. It's gonna be a slow rollout. So we've got a, a contract developed for our own native cryptocurrency. We're not gonna launch it until we have utility and obvious use cases such as this mobile app. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that team could work with us to develop the user profile Web3 enabled interfaces. Uh, or we could we could develop that out further as well and cool. hopefully bring it in-house, so, ideally, right? Let's see what our audience thinks. What are your thoughts on this platform and, and Bobby's vision here? Definitely identified a problem. Deacon, what's some feedback on the pitch? Did the, was the pitch easy for you to follow? What about it stood out to you? What's some feedback for the pitch? Yeah, so for me, I'm, I'm not familiar with this space. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm a professional speaker, so when I go to a conference, there's an app. It tells me, okay, here's where you need to be. Here's how map to get there. Here's where your meals are. Here's where, you know, so it's yeah. easy to track and follow. But, but it sounds like it's something like that except for virtual uh, type of events. And, and the payment is through cryptocurrency and NFTs and things like that. So I, I'm just not too familiar yeah, with this space. Really, yeah. Yeah. So I'll tell you, Bobby, you have definitely identified a problem. That is for sure. And there's going to be someone that creates an extremely meaningful solution in this space. And it might be you and your team. My concern is it's just scattered. Like the presentation was scattered. Like you, you're doing like a lot of things. And I don't know if any of those things are making money right now, but they are definitely taking a lot of attention. And there's going to need to be a like seismic attention on ensuring that this solution is built the right way, because this has like real financial potential. So for the reason I'm going to say no for due diligence, it just feels too all over the place. But you have identified a problem, and you should go full throttle into creating that solution. But I'm just concerned because like the pitch was a little bit scattered. It could just be because you're tired. Um, but you're up to so many different things, and I can't tell which one you're actually going to focus on most. And that's a little bit of a concern for me because we want founders to go really all in on their one thing with us. So for that reason, I'm a no. I wish you the best of luck. You're definitely on to something, and uh, I'm excited for it to come a big success. All right, after commercial break, we'll have another entrepreneur sharing what's on your napkin. Blueprint it is the place where you can go in and put those steps in there and then be able to impact the world and monetize on that by having a marketplace in the community that we're developing for you in Blueprinted. So we've created the app for any expert to be able to come in and put their steps, their exact steps to success 
in our app and put it on a marketplace where people can go and buy the steps to any success. All right, we're back from commercial break. We've got another entrepreneur sharing what's on your napkin. What is your name and where are you calling from? Fernando Villanueva from Tampa, Florida. Awesome. Fernando, thank you for being here. We're very excited to hear what's on your napkin. Please take it away. you got five minutes. Awesome. So first of all, thank you so much, Jared, for the opportunity and um, to pitch this fantastic idea. And all I want to say for you guys is buckle up. Uh, today, we're going to introduce Financial Reach or FinReach.io. It's a sales and marketing rocket fuel for financial advisors. What is my moonshot? My moonshot is to reach 50,000 paying financial advisors and transform the way that they communicate to their prospects and clients through an automated sales enablement and marketing SaaS platform with industry compliant and approved targeted content. And I know we can accomplish this, Jared, because with Synduit, you've gotten over 40,000 users. These are the metrics that matter. There's over 250,000 financial advisors in the US market at the moment. There's over 10,000 people that turn 65 years old every day and they're looking to retire. There's over 16 million Americans right now. They have between $100,000 to $3 million and more in income producing assets from the age of 55 to 70 years old. And financial advisors, they have a database of at least about 1,000 records of which five to 20% may be clients. Now, what happens to the rest of those? What is the problem or inefficiency that we're solving? At this moment, we understand that financial advisors as entrepreneurs, they need to run a business, they need to market their calendar to make sure, uh, uh, I'm sorry, they need to market to make sure that their pipeline keeps getting fed and they can keep their calendar full. They have to plan to onboard new clients, perform account reviews and existing customers, make sure that their plans are always according to plan, no matter how volatile the markets are. And I'm sure you guys have seen that the market right now is a little bit volatile. So they have to focus on that to make sure that their current uh, existing customers are satisfied. They also have to adapt to new regulations, learn new products, and there's many more things that they have to do. They don't really have the time, technology, or sometimes the, te the staff to stay in front of the existing database because they're only focusing and, uh, on feeding that pipeline to get more new leads. Now, they don't also have the time to learn and understand how, to exist, how their existing technology uh, works and how to do everything that they need to, to capture in order to market to that database effectively. So what is my solution today and what led me to bring up this solution? I used to work for a large, uh, one of the top producers here in Tampa, and only one email blast we sent out captured $500,000 in, in production. That cost pretty much nothing. So Fenrich.io will, will serve as a sales enablement platform and potential CRM for those that are starting up right now. Or if they already have a CRM, it will, it will have the capability to natively integrate with the current CRM, which most of them use Salesforce, Redtail, or Infusionsoft. And it will be a bi-directional sync where we initially work to capture the interests of each true record in their database and start adding them into buckets that are aligned to their interests. The buckets could be either taxes, could be their assets under management, it could be uh, either annuities, it could be life insurance, whatever they're, they're, uh, the prospect is interested in, we'll make sure that they start getting those uh, um, uh, targeted content. There's gonna be all, also a capability to create sequence or sequences where they, it can be also done to a one-to-one -one or one-to-many broadcast as well, depending on what the advisor would like to do. And it will make and help the consumer get educated enough where they can make a decision, their financial journey, whether it's there tomorrow to join with, uh, 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 to, join, uh, to partner with this financial advisor. The platform, one of the biggest values that we'll have is we'll have a plethora of FINRA compliant content and approved, which can easily be searched with OCR technology, segmented by multiple categories for the advisor to choose from. And we'll also have the, the feature that they can brand it completely to their, to their brand. 
or we can automatically have pre pre populated sequences for them to choose where they can just say, you know, I want I want Jared to go into this bucket. Uh, I don't want to really do much with it. Just add him and it'll have a six to 12 month or 18 months, whatever we come up with sequence where they can constantly be in front of them. Now, why am I the right person to bring this idea to the world? I do believe, and this is actually a great question that gave me a lot to think about. And I was just thinking about where I've been positioned within the past five years. And I've been placed in the financial industry world uh, within the last five years. And I've been extremely passionate about learning about the industry. And also I have surrounded myself with a lot of financial advisors lately, just learning about the industry, what their needs are, what they do. Uh, I've also had the pleasure to work with, again, as I said before, one of the top producers here in Tampa. And I learned the internal, internal process of what is a consumer journey in a financial firm. And also now where I work at, Living Response, uh, with, I understand the external needs, how they have to market to capture those leads. And then within, once they're, they are in the database, what is the journey that they go through? And I've also had the pleasure to work with um, our uh, RIAs, which is uh, Registered Investment Advisors that have large offices, and FMOs, field marketing offices, that, for example, uh, one of them is Advisors Excel, if I can mention one. Um, and being part of the largest direct marketing company for financial advisors right now has given me the resources and data that can help us fulfill the current need in this market. What is my economic model? My economic model is having a do-it-yourself or done for or done with you or done for you model. With a do-it-yourself, you can have a startup, growth, or enterprise. The the do it uh, done for you will have a bit of a fee that we can do pretty much everything for them. And done with you, uh, we can have a partnership where we can say, okay, we're going to sign you a customer success manager that whatever you need you send it to them and they'll take care of it and one thing that will be extremely valuable for them is and this uh, uh i haven't seen that this exists at the moment is having a marketplace where a financial advisor that they like to put content out there or they have an office where they have financial analysts and they they put a lot of custom content they can have the the, the feature that they can upload their content into the marketplace and if another financial advisor is excited about it and likes it, they can purchase the right to use that, uh, that content. So this is going to be a really good way for them to make a little bit of extra revenue. Uh, and it's completely firmware compliant. Now, the, the goal is to initially target the 1% of the financial advisors in the US. Now, I said 1% uh, of 250,000 that would be 2,500 within the first year. I think that's a very attainable goal. And once we reach that first goal, then when the second year, then we can start targeting a larger marketplace, which is the FMOs, uh, IMOs, broker dealers, so on and so forth. And then between the years four and 10, we can start getting our feet wet with international markets. What is my existing go-to market strategy? First thing is partner with FINRA approved content creators which will provide tremendous value and peace of mind to the financial advisors. That way they don't, they don't have to worry about, you know, uh, the content that you guys have in the platform, is it compliant, is it not? Then I have to have to put it through a, my compliance officer. There's a, there's a long process for that. So we're gonna take that away from that from, from them uh, and give them that peace of mind that anything that they market is gonna be FINRA approved. There's also the opportunity that, that we can um, do a temporary revenue share or negotiate revenue share with local boutique marketing companies that work with financial advisors. Also, the same applies for revenue share with leading response, which is where I work at right now, to access their database of, of over 200,000 financial advisors and continue attending financial services conferences, especially the, uh, one of the largest FMOs, Advisors Excel events. Why is 10K the perfect partner for me? 
To be honest, this is another question that made me think a lot. And I've been following the Tanks brands for the past uh, five years. And I've consumed a lot of the content. So to me, 10K project is a perfect partner because this idea can be easily executed with the right coaching, the right mentoring, and the funds necessary. And let's be honest, no one can do better marketing than 10X brands. Also, to me, this is just not an idea. This has been validated through the past few years by talking with many financial advisors, helping them market their brands to the company that I work with, and also noticing that a lot of those large companies, they try to adopt this, but they don't do it in a very efficient or productive way. So I'm ready to disrupt the financial services industry with the best actionable sales and implement platform with my partner, 10K Projects. And something memorable, as you can see in the top left corner, that's my, my family, father of two, husband of one. And uh, let's, I, I'm gonna leave you with this. Uh, Les Brown once said, the graveyard is the richest place on earth because it is here that you will find all the hopes and dreams that were never fulfilled, the books that were never written, the songs that were never sung, the inventions that were never shared, the cures that were never discovered, all because someone was too afraid to take the first step, keep with the problem or determined to carry out their dream. We're not taking this to the grave and we're ready to make this happen. So let's go. Great job, um, and thank you for that wonderful picture of your family as well. So questions for you. How many um, FINRA-approved content providers are there? You can stop sharing your screen. Uh, so right now, I'm looking into the largest one, which is uh, Broadridge, and also Morningstar. Okay, and, and they, they have content, and compliance departments never have to review that? They, they, what, the good thing about that is that they, whatever content they write, they, they send it over to FINRA, and FINRA stamps it as approved, and then they can market it out there. So then the compliance department for a financial advisory firm doesn't have to review it as long as it's marked from FINRA. Is that accurate? Like, you, you're eliminating that step. Is that accurate? That's correct. Got That's it. correct. Okay, cool. And are you, would you sell this to independents, or are you going to the, the larger advisory f firms that exist in the world? Because many of them have existing technology. So who, who are you selling this to? That's a great question. My, my goal is to start with, uh, with independent first, but with the relationship that I currently have uh, with, with the company that I work at, I think we can, it's going to be easy to tap into those larger FMOs and have them test, beta test and say, hey, you know, just test it. Let us know what you think. Give us your feedback. Let us know if there's something, there's something valuable for your, for your aides. Cool. So what, what's unique? Is it the, the features of the platform or the, the distribution of the content? Like what, 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 what is your USP? Because you mentioned that, that they're, and USP is unique selling proposition, but you mentioned that most of these advisors are using something, right? They're using Infusionsoft, they're using Salesforce.com, they're using MailChimp, like they're, they're using something. So what is your USP? Is it the fact that you have a better email marketing software or you have the content that can be distributed and even personalized with their headshot or logo on? Like, what's your USB? Fantastic question. So my unique value proposition with this is that right now there's actually existing technologies that, for example, Salesforce, that's not our competition. I don't want to compete with them. We just happen to have the capability for them to have a CRM. If it's a, a junior rep, they can utilize that and then they can evolve into another one if they need to. But are the, the best feature of our, our, of our platform is having that sales enablement piece that you can create custom sequences, you can create, uh, and, and not only create custom sequences, but you can also grab from existing content instead of having, uh, instead of thinking, okay, what am I gonna send this prospect about taxes? They can just type in the platform with the OCR technology, it'll find any and all documents uh, uh, or, or emails or research. Uh, Does this exist, by the way? Taxes. Does this exist? Have you built some of this already? Uh, not yet, but oh, I yeah. do have... no, you're, you're speaking into it as if many of it, much of it's existing already. So that's, that's great. Um, what questions you got, Deacon? Um, one, I, I totally understand where you're coming from. Uh, I'm a professional author and speaker, not a marketing expert, right? And so you have these financial advisors who went to school to learn finance and financial planning, but they're not marketers. Um, one thing that I look for in marketing is revenue generating opportunities. Is, is my marketing strategy actually going to be generating revenue for me? 
So um, how, how does that look like for, and there's also brand loyalty, right? You have some of these guys who are, are, are loyal to what they're using. Why should they change and go to what you're doing with uh, financial, financial reach IO? That, that's an amazing question. And one thing that opened my eyes was working at the, uh, at the financial company that I used to work here in Tampa, just by sending out one email blast. And this is a database that nobody has reached out into uh, for a long time, of course. And all of a sudden we just grab, we just have somebody come into the office and they give the financial advisors $500,000 extra for something that didn't really cost anything to the financial advisor. I mean, it cost before to get them to be, to get them into that race as a lead. But I've also tested, I, I run part of the email marketing for financial advisors where I work at. And I've seen that, uh, look, there's, 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 a pro, there's a product called Tenny Reconnect that we reconnect with the database. And we've brought for some of them uh, $5 million extra in revenue, $8 million. I mean, it varies. But again, not all the databases are going to be the same because it depends on the strategy that the financial advisors uh, use to, to market themselves. But having the knowledge of all the, all the potential revenues uh, or avenues that they can look into, it's, I mean, it's... it's so, uh, so you're awesome. creating something that's going to uh, basically help these financial plans to get through open rates and click-through rates. Um, you know, it was attractive about that email. I'm going to open it up and say, wow, this is something that I want to, I want to dive into. Right. And it's going to be actionable. Actionable meaning that it's, it's intentional and we want them to, once they open that email and they're, they're attracted to it, there, there will be calls to actions there. The goal is to get them in, back into the office of the financial advisor and see if there's any, any, other, any other opportunity for them to get more money or just ma make them become a, a client. So I was asking you before about what makes you unique are the features or the content. And, and you answered the right way. It's the content, not necessarily the features. And if I could go back in time with Synduit, because you made reference to that, what I would have not done is I wouldn't have built the features. And I would have built a content distribution platform that would distribute content through every other marketing software and sales enabling software in the world. Because what I did do was create a pain of transition. And we made it now. So now like, we, we're good, we pulled it off. But there was a point in time where it was really challenging because we had to convince the small business owner to leave what they were using to use our platform. And that pain of transition wasn't yeah. necessarily an easy thing to do when what made us unique was not our email marketing capability. It wasn't our social media scheduling mm -hmm. capability. It wasn't our basic CRM. It was the fact that we produced content at such an extreme scale. There's a lot of competition in the space of SaaS for financial service providers, like, 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 like a ton. But there's not a lot of competition in the space of content that gets preloaded into the existing software solutions that are on the market. And if you're able to build a relationship with these FINRA content providers who are not doing that, they're just selling content to financial advisors to then upload into their other platforms, if you can create a really seamless and eloquent way of having that content loaded into their existing software, loaded into salesforce.com, loaded into Infusionsoft, so they don't have to abandon what they've been using for years, then you really nailed something. Let's see what our audience thinks. What are your thoughts about this platform? If you're a financial service professional, would you use this platform? Are you sick and tired of using Salesforce and you're looking for a new technology? Or the thought of leaving what you're currently using and moving here is so painful, even though there's content, that you wouldn't even take the step forward. What is your feedback on the pitch? Um, I, I like the pitch. Uh, I, I would have liked to have seen more bullet points, I think, and mm -hmm. less text. Yeah. And when he asked, what, why are you the right person? He gave a very good answer for, for more from a um, professional perspective. I want to hear more of his heart. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I want to hear more of the passion from my, why am I personally the right person for this? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. why do I feel I'm being called to this? I, I would have yeah. loved to have heard more of that. Awesome, great feedback. So here, here's, I'm like grappling here because I, I really know the space. Like, like this is what I, I did. And if I could do it over, I would have done it actually very differently than how I did it. And I'm confident that we'd be at hundreds of thousands of small business owners if I didn't force the transition. Although that's, what, that's where I went, we pulled it off, it's great. But we've been in hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of businesses, if we just stayed to what we were best at, which was the ability to produce content that could be replicated for the end user and then have that loaded into a 
third-party software solutions. That's not what you presented today, but this whole premise of, of reaching out to these FINRA content providers is a really interesting solution. So I don't want to derail your vision for your idea. I just know it's a Herculean feat to pull off what I pulled off at Synduit. Like it, millions and millions and millions of dollars. And whenever we launch tech companies, our goal is what can we launch within three to six months maximum? Three to six months maximum. And that means that it can't be millions and millions of dollars. You can't spend that kind of money that quickly. So we're looking at maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars. And I know that you can't rebuild what I built at Synduit for a couple hundred thousand dollars. So I'm going to say yes to due diligence for you. But my recommendation, because I know what the team's going to say as well in due diligence, is well, where are we going to start? Like, it sounds like Synduit. And Synduit took years to get to a point where it was mature and stable. So where are we going to begin? What can we launch in three to six months that solves maybe a piece of the challenge for the, for the, for the, for the provider, for the financial service professional, so that we can validate it and validate your ability to go to market with us and then from there begin to pick up momentum. So I'm a yes because I do think that you're onto something from the standpoint of content for financial service professionals, but I know the teams that say the same thing I'm saying. Where do we start? It's up to you to figure that out for the due diligence call. Great job, and we'll see you in the experience. All right, after commercial break, we'll have our final entrepreneur sharing what's on your napkin. What if there was a way to guarantee farm fresh produce in the home of every family in your zip code? What if you and your family could launch a business out of your home, place of worship, or anywhere you desire? What if you could become part of the solution to current healthcare crisis that plagues our world? What if you could become your local farm bridge? We are on a mission to find one local health enthusiast in every zip code from around the world to launch a local farmer's market. This business opportunity will take only a few hours a week and produce significant income for you and your family. Plus, it's a force for good as we unite and simplify the process of connecting local farmers with local families so that farm fresh produce exists within every home in your community. We are on a mission to revitalize our soil, help the farmers who work tirelessly to provide high nutrient foods to our families, and strengthen the health of our nation that has been manipulated into consuming low nutrient, ultra processed foods. Together, we can grow the number of thriving, sustainable farms and increase human health and longevity through creating ease and access to high nutrient foods. Spots are limited and zip codes are being claimed quickly. So if you could see yourself as part of the solution, we invite you to join our movement. All right, we are back with another entrepreneur sharing what's on your napkin. What is your name and where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Ingo and uh, I'm from Germany. I am 46 years old. Yes. Awesome. And how do you pronounce your first name? Ingo, I-N-G-O. I-N-G-O-O. Awesome. Well, thank you for being here. We're very excited to have you. You have five minutes. Please share what's on your napkin. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's go. Let's, let's start. Five minutes or 10 minutes? Five minutes. Five minutes only. Okay. You got it. You got it, man. You had me at hello. <laughs> so you get, now just go and build from there. <laughs> okay. I will show you what my, my vision, my product, my idea is. It is uh, a system with which we can create fantastic apps. We connect them with the Internet of Things and all done with a zero line of code. Everything is without, done without any line of codes. And so you can reduce the time of software production, um, uh, the time and cost of software production of more than 90%. And uh, you can uh, also connect the strongest trends we have today, like Internet of Things and much more in an unmatched speed. Okay. And... Next, I will show you a problem. The problem today we have in the area of digitalization is no one can do coding or, or only a few people can do it and even fewer can do it well. And very much risks in creating software projects. 49% um, uh, for example don't meet the deadlines. 31% um, uh, don't meet their goals. Software projects are very, very expensive and we need specialized people. And uh, the hugest problem, my opinion is, my opinion is that um, a lot of companies, cities and so on are missing major trends. Yes. And the solution is a blue passion because I think that every person, every company should be able to develop software solutions by themselves. And 
without a single line of code. I will show you in a video in the next slide with a reduction of cost and time about more than 90%. And they can all be digital ahead. They can uh, increase the productivity, the, the, the customers who use it, reduce cost at the same time with connection, connected information, tools for digital employees, track and trace, and much, much more, okay? And here you see video, how repression works um, in real life. It is an example in a museum. The lady in the office um, has to create an application. She does it by herself with a Blue Passion platform, drag and drop, no line of code. And um, in the next step, she moves out and installs the hardware. This can be beacons or QR codes, NFC text, or she even can take pictures of the exhibitions, of the images, the pictures, or something like this and um, load them up into the Blue Passion platform for augmented reality. And guess, guess what happens now? The native app for iOS and Android devices is up to date, and the visitors can interact with everything. And all done um, in a few minutes or a few hours um, work what, uh, for what, um, in other cases, you would need a team of software developers for iOS, Android, and um, you would take weeks or months and would create a really, really high costs for this. And uh, Blue Passion can be used. I will step over this slide um, in, a, in a really very, very much um, uh, spaces like culture or retail. I think this trend is uh, very important with you in the USA with beacons and so on. And all can be, as I said, with the Internet of Things part like beacons, also managed by the profession platform, and also can work in the manufacturing space that we have the customers who um, increase the productivity of the workers um, over 5% because they get the information of the machine here if it has problems, or you can track um, pathways, okay? So Blue Passion. It is not an idea, it's a product. We have created it uh, in the last four years. I have invested more than one million US dollars for it. Yes. Um, it is a, a product um, which we have developed with our remote team we have in Hanoi, in Vietnam. And um, the platform already works. We have found the first customers. We belong to the bigger players, players in the smart city space in Germany, and we are only a few months on the market. And our customers, all of them, love Blue Passion because they are so fast and they can reduce the costs so extremely. Here you see some screens. Here this is an application made with Blue Passion by the customer himself, via drag and drop, with uh, checklists and so on. This is Eaton, where we work with, a uh, worldwide company. And here are some city apps. And I can show you much more the next time if you like to. Uh, now the most important thing, why I'm a right person to bring, your, to bring the idea to the world. Yes, um, uh, I know how to code. Um, um, we lead a software development team in Vietnam since uh, 10 years. Um, we have uh, created a platform with the with most interesting drivers of digitalization, the most uh, attractive and strongest trends in the platform. Um, uh, also for the motivation here you see my wife left her secure payment job um, four years ago and since then she leads our software team and um, let's go one more um, our economic model is um, the target groups are municipalities cities for the smart city things companies from a size of 15 employees from a manufacturing area and um, it is, uh, we um, provide the modules and the Blue Passion platform um, um, with, a, with a modules which uh, the customer has contracted with us. Um, it is a pay per usage. And we have a value for a customer about uh, three or five years. Yes. And um, we are expecting revenue. Um, about two million US dollar per month in the next three years. Um, yes, it's very interesting because uh, the platform already is there. We have a first customer there. Um, we only need to build, um, yes, uh, a sales team. 
um, we need to um, uh, go into a search engine optimization. Uh, we need to have a present in the trade press. We need to, to uh, build a very, very strong sales team, as I said, um, and also partnerships um, with uh, companies in the IT area we already have and where they like the passion and also help us selling it. And um, let's go one more. <laughs> Why are you the right partner, the perfect partner for me? Yes, because you have everything that what I do not have. Yes, I, we will need a sales setup, we will need a strong marketing, we will need to build the organization we do not have. And uh, we think that the US market and the European market are really very interesting for Blue Passion in the next years. And um, uh, we are ready to live and work with you in the USA, uh, right now in Germany, but uh, I'm dreaming of living in the USA since I'm a small kid. And um, I'm really interested um, about your vision, build, scale, and sell 10,000 tech companies uh, in the next um, nine years. And my vision for you and me and Blue Passion is, let me say this and then I'm, f I'm, I'm final, um, that 10,000 companies will use Blue Passion and pay per each at least 8,000 US dollars per year. This is what the costs are for the customer, so it's much more um, uh, it's, it's much less expensive than um, um, native development would cost. And here, the last slide of the presentation for you. Um, I know I'm, I'm in more about uh, five minutes. Um, for me, it is really very important that we have the strongest trends in one platform. We have a no code platform, um, uh, annual growth about 23%. We have smart cities in there, the IoT, IoT trends, beacons with. 32% um, per year, about the next five years. And over my platform, you can manage uh, beacon projects in every scale, um, also intelligent ones, um, track and trace with beacons. We also have the or pay per use and time. And we have also a really very um, high annual growth, about 35%. This is everything I wanted to show you today. And uh, awesome, great succeed. job. So, what what Thank revenue you. have you done in the past year? It has been four years. So, what is your revenue in the past year? Um, the revenue in the last year was uh, we only start. We started earning money. In the last year, it was about um, let me guess uh, one hundred fifty thousand US dollars. We are expecting this year about 250, 300,000 US dollars because we are also living with the customers we. Um, generated last year. Cool. You can stop sharing your screen. So, how do you see that increasing in two years to two million dollars a month? Like, what changes? Because that's that's exponential. But you can stop sharing yeah, your screen. But yeah. So, how, how are you going from one hundred fifty thousand dollars last year, three hundred thousand dollars this year, to two million a month, which is which is twenty four million dollars in, in 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 two years? Yeah, in the next two or three years, um, I think um, that we will need to build a really strong sales team. I'm calculating with 50 people in sales, and we also need a strong um, a marketing also there. And um, we are calculating, oh, I don't know, uh, by now um, I, I need to look uh, in the calculation um, with a realistic um, a number of customers um, uh, there. Um, so I so, can tell you. So how, so how are you doing it now, though? So because there's obviously some team in place, and your, your wife quit her job to do this full time. So yep. did you raise capital? Or are you just continuing nothing. to self fund this? Um, nothing, nothing. It has all been uh, my capital I had uh, for my for my uh, living in, in older years. I don't know what it's called in English, and um, uh, it's it's uh, uh, money I have um, I've put aside and. Um, then I had the idea for Blue Passion. It has an idea I had um, yeah, created about three or five years before. And then I said, this is the time to start with it now. Before that, I have created individual software for customers. Dan, Deacon, what you got? Okay, so how many customers do you currently have now? When you first started your first year, how many customers and, and what, uh, how many customers do you have now? What's your uh, cost of acquisition? Um, we are, right now, we have uh, 15 to 20 customers using Blue Passion. And we have um, yeah, some uh, cities with it, um, with smart city applications. And um, 
the customer acquisition was uh, very easy between, uh, in the corona pandemic because the cities have realizes, realized that they need to get more and more digital. It's a really a huge problem we have here in Germany. So um, some cities called uh, me by themselves. And on the other hand, we had some, some, some sales uh, as students who called um, the city managers um, out by telephone or we made email campaigns and so on. And on the other hand, we have some customers here in our region with some um, companies who know what we do and who are some friends of us. And um, also we got Eaton as a customer. Um, that was a, a huge industry company, which I showed you. Um, they have seen uh, Blue Passion working here in my hometown, uh, near Copelands, near Frankfurt. And they said, oh, wow, that's great. But what's your, cost for, what's your, what's your cost for acquisition? What's your cost for acquisition? What's your cost for acquisition? What does it cost you to acquire those customers? It's, it's not very much. It's really not very much, I think. Um, we are calculating that um, a sales representative um, can get more than two customers per month. And the customer in the first year uh, pays around 10,000 US dollars. So the customer acquisition cost, um, to, to go this way for answering the question, uh, can, be, um, uh, uh, can be lower than the earning of a customer in the first year. Okay, so once I build, once I build the app as a customer, right, and you say in the US you're, you're charging about $8,000 a year, then once I build the app and I have the app, what am I paying for now? Um, then you pay for using the Blue Passion platform for keeping the application up to date. Yeah, you can okay. always put um, everything new in there. You can um, uh, create everything what you need for working with it. So um, the customer uh, learns how to work with Blue Passion. It takes one hour or something like this. We always help them when we need something. But um, I want the customer to manage everything by himself. So we do not have any cost or any time for... for it feels for expensive though. Something. It feels expensive because like, I know you can go to no-code agencies and they could build you, they do it for you for, for way less than $8,000. So it, it feels expensive to, to have a platform where you're going to give to somebody else and say, you're going to have to do it, but you're, still, you're paying more than if a company did it for you. And then there's fees too. I'd just be concerned on product market fit. Like The reason I'm confused is you said to me, your vision would be that, that Project 10K has all 10,000 apps on this platform, but it doesn't seem like that's the use of the platform. Like the platform seems very specific to municipalities and manufacturing work, and like we build like software as a service for dentists. Like I don't, I don't see how that works on your platform. Um, so I'm a little bit confused with that part. Let's see what our audience thinks. What are your thoughts on Blue Passion? Is this a platform that you would use? Is this something that we should move forward with into due diligence? Deacon, feedback on the pitch. Yeah, I, I, I like to um, uh, Ingo very much. Uh, uh, I thought he was very personable, but he doesn't. I don't think he knows his numbers. Yeah, which I think is a problem. And to me, like you mentioned, Jared, it seems to be a, little, a bit expensive. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I, this, these are really important questions, like the cost for acquisition, especially at this stage, because it's been four years. Like you did a hundred thousand dollars in your first year. It's awesome, like amazing. You're gonna double it this year, and then you're gonna go to to twenty five million dollars, right? There's no way you'll get to $25 million if you don't know your cost per acquisition. Like there's just, it's impossible to get there because you're now doing this on a small scale, right? Like you know every one of your clients, like you know every user by name. I remember back in the day at Synduit, I used to know every user by name. I'm like, we're never gonna make it if I know every user by name. Like we got to get to a point where we don't know our users because there's just so many of them. And, and I know my cost per acquisition. Like I know exactly what it's gonna take to acquire an end user and I'm willing to spend that so that I can get those end users and I know how long they're gonna last for. So the numbers are a little bit of concern. I'm concerned about product market fit. Like the no code community as large has come out with this like this this incredible opportunity for people to not have to know how to code and they can hire an agency to do it and spend a thousand to three thousand dollars to get what they're looking for with no ongoing fees unless they decide to pay a very small fee for the support package and to spend eight thousand dollars on the platform where you're gonna have to first do all the work it might be me just missing the power of the platform but then that's on you in the presentation to not really explain what makes this platform different than what i'm thinking no code is so for that reason i'm going to pass i wish you nothing but the best of luck congratulations on what you've done so far i'm sure you'll do great things and we appreciate you for being on the show so there we have it my friend four pitches what's on your napkin let's speak about these quickly so our first pitch 
We had Seth on here with base 10 health, a ton of knowledge, right? Like he, he knows his stats, he knows the data. We obviously know there's a problem with regards to just healthcare in our country. There's potential here. My concern with it was, was just how big it is, right? Like Deacon, like he showed that one slide yeah. and it was like 40 features. And I'm like, <laughs> where are we gonna start? Like, exactly. because, because you know how challenging building tech is, right? We gotta exactly. find a starting point. So in due diligence, I'm excited to see where Seth says we should begin. What's the one thing that we can do that no one else is doing in the space to just start building some traction? Because what we don't want to do is spend three years building something, because in three years, there's going to be thousands of new solutions that launch. We want to launch in three months. Like, what do we bring to market? The next pitch we had was Bobby. And with Bobby, it is Web3 solution. Nice gentleman, but just way too scattered for me. Did you feel that as well? Because I know that you haven't done much with Web3 and with crypto, but with a presentation, the whole premise is you want to make it so simple that even yeah. someone that doesn't understand the industry is able to at least grasp exactly. it. Exactly. And I understand exactly. the industry and I couldn't grasp yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So it's just he, hard to follow. Did exactly. you find that as well? No, absolutely. And for us, yeah. that matters because like this is someone that would sit in a co-founder seat. And if, if that's how, how the, the mind works, which is a brilliant mind, for us, it doesn't work. It just feels like there's no focus. We need focus as a founder. Yeah. The third pitch we had was a... Uh, Fernando here, pitching something that, that I really understand, and, and, and you do as well, building Christian marketing solutions. So an all-in-one marketing platform with content loaded inside of it, right? Really interesting, and it's a big build. Like, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a huge, huge, it's a Herculean feat to build SaaS like that. I hope in due diligence, he has a really unique idea on how to start with the content side. Like, how exactly. do we get the content into other platforms versus building the platform itself? And then our final pitch was Ingo, and with Inco, I'm just concerned this product market fit. I know a ton about the no-code world. I don't know if you've done any work there yet. But the genius of no-code is that people like us who don't know how to code in a weekend can launch an app. Yeah, no interest and, in learning how to is, code either. Yeah, no interest. Like zero interest. So we can do it ourselves. Yeah. But when we do it ourselves, it's almost free. Like right. It's just our time. Or we hire an agency to do it. And they usually start at $1,000 to $3,000 and then you own you're it, done. like you're done. Exactly. So I'm just concerned about product market fit, but maybe maybe I was missing it. Maybe there's something else to this platform. But that's why this show matters, right? We have these four entrepreneurs from around the world that have these early stage ideas, Ingo's a little bit more mature, and what they're hoping is that they can convey the value proposition, and they only have five minutes to do it. But in five minutes, anything's possible. I mean, realize Roger Bannister was told that it was impossible to run a four-minute mile, and he just didn't listen, because people <laughs> tried right. before him, but then what did he do? He ran the four-minute mile, and he proved it was possible, and you can prove it's possible as well. We want to invite you on this show. We want you not to be a spectator and just hear the pitches and comment below. We want you to show up with your idea. You believe everybody has a tech idea, right? Everybody, Absolutely. Everybody has an idea written on a piece of paper right now. We want to invite you. Head over to pitch10k.com and submit that idea. It's free to submit. We want to review your submission. And if we see potential, we're going to invite you to pitch. So what are your thoughts on the napkin? What are your thoughts on, on the power of writing down that idea, committing to it, and then seeing it come to life? How powerful is the napkin? Oh, it, it's very powerful, Jared. You know, and, and one of the things I think that holds people back is fear. Yeah. You know, and, and for me, from a, sp a spiritual perspective, you know, the scripture says that love casts out all fear. Yeah. So if you're passionate, you have that love that you feel motivated, Write it down and then get in contact Let's with pitch10k.com. Pitch10k. We appreciate you. Thank you for watching the show. We'll see you soon. Bye for now.